In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who may have been. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you knit together your faithful people of all times and places into one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant us so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that together with them we may come to the unspeakable joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the Festival of All Saints is written in the Revelation of Jesus Christ to St. John, chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. The second lesson is written in the first letter of St. John, chapter 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Please stand. we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
Let us look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Yes? You want to be numbered among the saints? It sounds like it. You sang this morning three times, With them numbered may we be here and in eternity. Perhaps it's because you want to belong to that great multitude from every tribe and nation and language and people standing before the throne of God, serving God and praising him day and night in his temple and shouting salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Or perhaps, perhaps you would just like to be in a place with no hunger and no thirst, with no more pain, sorrow and heartbreak, no more tears, no more death. Maybe you're just tired and you want rest. Maybe life is hard and you're ready for something else. If you want to be in this number, though, how how is it that you achieve it? How do you get to be a saint? The popular answer is that, that, well, saints are good people. The word saint, after all, comes from the word holy. And so the idea goes that to be a saint, you, you must have to live a really good life. Or another idea is that saints are extra-religious people, preferably ones who have performed some verifiable miracles after you have lived an exemplary and extraordinary life. But not so. Fortunately for us, we are not left to wonder or to make up our own ideas about what it is to be a saint. Saint John the Evangelist got to get a glimpse into heaven. And there in this vision, one of the elders standing around the throne of God himself came to him and and told him who these were, these saints, who they are and where they come from. He said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, these saints, these saints in heaven didn't always look like this. They weren't always wearing white, but now they have washed their robes. That means that previously their robes, that is their appearance, their standing before God, their robes were dirty, they were filthy. It means that these saints that we see, they were sinners. Every one. It's not as though some saints got to heaven by being good or trying their best. Or, and only some of them needed to clean up their act first. No, no, the whole multitude, every single saint now in heaven or ever will be, is a filthy sinner. In fact, we're not just talking about people who have done nasty, filthy, foul things who are really sinners. The prophet Isaiah writes that all of us have become one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And the word that he uses for filthy is actually the word for menstrual, if that gives you an idea. Of course, if you're only a little dirty, you only need a little wash. If your hands have a little bit of dirt on them, a water rinse might do the job. But if you have grease or oil or ink on your hands, That will take a stronger cleanser. If the only effective cleanser for your stained self is blood, 
that shows you that your stain, your sin is really a death sentence. You are not just dirty, you are dead in trespasses and sins. Then the only thing that can cleanse you is blood. You want to be in that number. Well, then someone's going to have to die. That someone, of course, of course, is the very Lamb of God himself. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God whose blood washes you, baptizes you, cleanses you, covers you like a robe. The white robe is a robe of righteousness. The righteousness that is the holiness of Jesus Christ himself. You want to be a saint? You have to be a sinner first. And that doesn't mean that, that if you want to, be, to go to heaven, then you should go out and look for opportunities to sin. It means to re- recognize what you are. That's what Jesus describes in our gospel for today as being poor in spirit and mourning over sin and hungering and thirsting for righteousness because you don't have it on your own. We call all of this repentance. When you live in repentance, Jesus says, blessed are you. When you live in forgiveness, when you live in your baptism, you live by the cleansing blood of Jesus. Jesus says about you, blessed are you. You are a saint of God. Not someday, today. For you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have been sanctified. You have been justified by faith in his blood. You belong to the number of saints. But you aren't in heaven yet. That much is clear. Those that St. That John saw in his vision, they, they are. The saints are all the holy ones, all believers. This All Saints celebration turns our attention, though, to those who are around the throne. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. There are some who imagine that this great tribulation is a a specified length of time in which things are going to be really bad for believers here on earth. But no. The great tribulation that these in heaven have come out of is is simply what we call life. You and I, who are in the middle of it, know what that means. There is, of course, the ordinary, normal tribulation that is life in this fallen world. The kind of thing that everyone on earth experiences. There is sickness, pain, and suffering that is common to man. But these, who have come out of the grip tribulation, these have experienced something that is really only for Christians. There are some troubles that Christians experience because they are Christians. I'm not just talking about some kind of formal persecution of Christians when people insult you and call, call you names and slander you, as Jesus speaks about. Christian tribulation can be as simple as the struggle to put to death your sinful nature. The lifelong, year-to-year, day-to-day struggle to do what is right when you are, even when you're alone in doing it. That's hard. And year after year, the struggle gets harder and harder. 
It could also be the extra temptation that the devil sends your way because you are one of his, because you are his enemy. Temptations to doubt that in the midst of sadness, God is still good to you. Temptations to be impatient, to be unloving, to grumble. Now, of course, you and I might wish to be spared all of this. We might wish that we could just go straight there and not pass through such tribulation. We might wish that we could avoid all of it. Except for this. Except that Jesus calls us blessed. Not when we have passed through it. But Jesus calls us blessed now, in the midst of the great tribulation that is life. For one, because these things are an indication that we belong to those who came before us. For if, as Jesus says, if they treat us like they treated the prophets, then we find ourselves in company with the prophets. If you are treated like they treated Jesus, if you suffer like Jesus, that could very well be because you're close enough to Jesus, closely associated with him, and that's a good thing. Secondly, because this great tribulation, the sorrows of life in general and those specifically for Christians, they have a way of stripping us of everything else which we had formerly feared and loved and trusted because they are no more. Stripped of us, trips, it strips us of everything. Our health, our youth, our wealth, family, everything in which we trusted eventually falls away, finally and at last our breath takes from us. Everything except for this white robe, our baptismal identity. Who we are in Christ, who we are because Christ has called us so, so that no longer am I to be defined by my work or my abilities or my relationships or my past. No, none of that. Only by Jesus and his blood for me. So it is good for us on a day like today, all saints, to remember those who have gone before us, to look forward to being with them in glory. That is, it is good for us to long to be in that number in heaven, to be counted among the number of the saints. Through faith and forgiveness in Jesus' blood, through our time of tribulation on earth, my dear friends, we'll get there. But I think what we sang is correct. With them numbered may we be here and in eternity. Our place in this number is now. For now we are washed in Jesus' blood and are clothed in his righteousness. Now, in the midst of tribulation, now Jesus' word speaks blessing upon us. And his word is sure. Blessed are you. Dear saints of God, amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of God.
Encouraged by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us pray for God's people to endure to the day of Christ's coming and for the needs of all people as we approach that blessed day. For all of God's children who have been baptized into Christ and who rejoice in him by faith, for our remembrance of those who went before us with the sign of faith and now rest from their labors, and for those who do not yet know God's mercy in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the persecuted church throughout the world, for a bold witness in the face of rejection and threat, and for the martyrs who choose faithfulness rather than deny Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the nations and those who govern here and in every place, for the fruits of mercy, for an impartial system of justice, for the protection of the weak, aged and unborn, and for freedom to worship the Lord in spirit and truth, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick in their afflictions, for the aged and infirm in their struggles, for the dying in their final days on earth, and for the grieving who are wounded by the loss of those they love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the will to keep faith with the saints who have gone before us, for wisdom as we contend for the faith against the enemies of God's word, for faithful preaching and teaching, and for all those who serve us with the Lord's word and sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy our faith and repentance, to receive for our benefit the body and blood of Christ in this holy sacrament, for our unity of doctrine and life as God's people, and for the fruits of this blessed communion to be displayed in the grace of holy living. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering the saints whose lives and witness point to Christ, joining them in steadfast witness as we pass on the sacred deposit, to those who will follow us, we give you thanks. We give special thanks for your servants who have finished their course of life in faith in this last year and who now rest in you. Alleluia. Vivian May Jesuits. Jerome Walter Tim. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. In the communion of all your saints, gathered into one body of your Son, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, encouraged by their faith and strengthened by their fellowship, may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
Almighty God, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. Out of love, you created us and everything which exists. In mercy, you preserved the church in Noah's day with a flood. In grace, you promised to bless us through Abraham's seed. With patience, you protected that seed through the judges and kings of Israel. In faithfulness, you repeated your promises through the prophets. And when the time had fully come, you sent your son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law with a perfect and sufficient sacrifice which paid the price for the sins of the entire world. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Lord, we bow before you in thankfulness for your many and varied gifts, for Christ's redemptive death, his victorious resurrection, his ascension promises, and his powerful reign at your right hand. Bolstered by your endless grace and Pentecost spirit, we eagerly await his glorious return. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
O God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Thank you.